Hello, everyone. Welcome to the ICU DDR virtual conference, Sustaining and Adapting Addiction Science to Virtual Realities. My name is Jessica Keen, and I will be the moderator for this session, and we're so glad that you joined us today. Please submit any questions to the presenters for the Q&A at the end of the session via the Zoom chat. First up, we have a recording from Moses Audu, and Moses is a professor of psychiatry at the University of Jos, as well as a consultant psychiatrist at Jos University Teaching Hospital in Nigeria. Moses will be talking about ICU DDR activities at University of Jos, Nigeria. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, viewers, and welcome to my presentation from Jos, Nigeria. Uh, I'm presenting, you know, the activities of uh, the International Consortium of Universities on Drug Demand Reduction at the University of Dust. There are three of us who uh, prepared the slides, but I'm presenting because of uh, time. University of Dust, uh, this is uh, the gate of the University of Dust, is a public a university owned by the federal government of Nigeria and uh, it's located in central Nigeria. Uh, this is a, an area view uh, of the university. As a way of introduction, our teaching methods have been traditionally, you know, face to face, except uh, for few courses that, you know, we are uh, hosted by the university for long distance uh, learners. But with the advent of uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, then there was some uh, suspension of all the face-to-face -face lectures. And the suspension actually coincided with some form of uh, industrial action by public universities in Nigeria at that time. Uh, however, for those of us who are in the addition unit, we are not strictly uh, university uh, staff members alone. We also work at the University of Just Teaching Hospital. Our system is such that uh, the university is under the Federal Ministry of Education, while the teaching hospital is under the Ministry of Health. So, for those of us who are lecturers in university, we are staff of the university primarily, but we're also consultants to the teaching hospital. So we work in, a, in a both uh, institutions. So uh, the university was registered as a member of the ICDDR by the three of us uh, whose name appeared you know, at the beginning of the slide. We run workshops for UTC, UPC, and also the UNDC treatment program. Uh, the suspension of the face-to-face -face learning methods during COVID-19 didn't actually stop our work at the teaching hospital because we had to uh, continue with work as clinicians too. And then the training of staff on virtual learning uh, after the lockdown also uh, continued, you know, at. Uh, the uh, teaching hospital. Uh, during the lockdown, the university, you know, met and immediately decided to train staff after the lockdown. The lockdown didn't take so long as, you know, it's found in the Europe and America. It was short-lived and uh, we are not actually experiencing the effects of COVID-19 like you know, is experienced in the uh, in the Western world or in the developed countries and in the US, and even the death rate here is a uh, minimal. So, uh, university adopted Microsoft Teams for online teaching, and staff were trained after the lockdown for teaching for online or virtual learning. But for those of us who work at the teaching hospital, who are clinicians there, the virtual learning continued on a Zoom platform, WhatsApp, and we use also emails. So we 
did minimal face-to-face -face, uh, learning at the teaching hospital, but we also carried on with uh, virtual learning through this uh, uh, media. The faculty staff in the additional unit participated in the UTC uh, training or walkthrough for Africa. And uh, my humble self actually facilitated the walkthrough for Uganda after we had the walkthrough for Africa as a whole. And uh, postgraduate students from other universities and higher institutes of learning joined in our virtual learning when the universities were shut down. We continue in the addition unit. So some colleagues in other higher institutes of learning uh, were able to join us you know, online for our activities. And that was for the first time you know, we could collaborate in that manner. Uh, this is a view of the uh, teaching hospital, just university teaching hospital. And it is here that the, the additional unit is domiciled. Additional unit is domiciled uh, in the department of psychiatry because uh, the psychiatrists uh, have additional professionals who are trained uh, in that field. Our, our training in Nigeria is, you know, uh, like the British system. It's patterned after the British uh, system. Those of us who are staff of the university carry on normal university activities, do postgraduate uh, programs and undergraduate programs, so on and so forth. But we also train resident uh, doctors in psychiatry. For the, those who are resident doctors, uh, their training is mainly in the teaching hospital. And the curriculum that we uh, use for the teaching is based on our national postgraduate medical college of Nigeria. And we also have another college, which is a regional one, the West African College of uh, Physicians. So the curricula are similar for both uh, postgraduate colleges. So they have their own uh, training. And for training psychiatry, the first part of the training is for the membership, is for three years. And then two years after that, which makes it five years, one can uh, earn his fellowship in general psychiatry, then you spend an additional year making six years, six to seven years, you know, to specialize in your own uh, sort of specialty, whether it's uh, addiction psychiatry, or you want child and adolescent psychiatry, or general psychiatry, general adult psychiatry, or some will go into psychiatry of latter life, you know, or forensic psychiatry. So because of that, we have specialists or professionals who are already trained in psychiatry, so they run the addition unit, you know, at the teaching hospital. And because of this, our virtual learning continues concurrently with the face-to-face -face learning. And staff of the addition unit also participate in webinars organized by ISOP, ICGDR, and UNDC for our continuous uh, professional development, in addition to other uh, postgraduate programs that we do for trainees. And that most of the postgraduate seminars, journal reviews, and lectures we are, you know, uh, conducted online during the uh, lockdown because we found it more convenient because we wanted minimal face to face interaction. And uh, by consensus, in the addition unit, we shifted our programs to 7 p.m. And at that, we were able to run all our activities and uh, other uh, seminars like, uh, for instance, proposal, uh, defense, so on and so forth. And sometimes even our meetings were shifted, you know, uh, conducted online at that time. Uh, in the addiction unit, as I said, it's domicile at the teaching hospital. Trainers for UNDC, they're all the trainers are uh, trainers for UNDC treatment program. The key staff in the addition unit train staff for the UNDC, and they, they are all registered members of ISAP. And the national training uh, continues for uh, UTC Cross. And then we have three staff members who are national trainers for uh, UPC. So most of the key staff there do uh, national trainer for the Colombo Plan UTC and also uh, the UPC. We train for 
the university and other uh, people from other institutions and also uh, NGOs. But two staff members, uh, myself inclusive, are global GDR trainers, and uh, a staff currently uh, is participating in community based prevention implementing implementation systems online. And uh, the old university staff are trained on virtual learning. Addiction unit staff trained in the virtual walkthrough. All the addiction unit staff were trained in the virtual uh, walkthrough for Africa, UTC walkthrough for Africa. And uh, the staff participate in continuous professional development webinars by ICGDR, ISOP, UNC, and uh, University. So we had the privilege of uh, joining the webinars by the ICDDR, ISOP, and UNDC while the other you know, part of the university you know, tried to figure out what uh, to do before they came up with the Microsoft Teams and train staff. We didn't have a break. We continue online uh, since we are, we are already used motivated by the activities of these uh, international bodies. And uh, three members of uh, the additional unit also trained in the child and adolescent curriculum uh, for the UPC. Uh, and currently, a staff is training on the, the online uh, instructor-led managers and supervisors class nine, which is community-based prevention implementation systems. And uh, four are undergoing training on curriculum development in addiction science for Africa. So we are doing all this because we have tried to actually adapt the UTC, UPC, and also the UNC treatment into our addiction training programs. That's why we had to train in every available course that we can possibly get to actually strengthen our addiction unit. Some who are not psychiatrists also work in addiction unit. And what we have tried to do is to uh, do echo training for all non-members uh, who are non-psychiatrists, who have carried out echo training in UPC and uh, UTC for the others who are not uh, uh, psychiatrists. So our virtual ad activities in the additional units are webinars, meetings, we also do some assignments there, uh, journal review, we use, uh, do research uh, proposals, and then case studies. As I said, by consensus, we agree that uh, it's better to minimize the face-to-face -face interaction uh, in the light of COVID-19 uh, uh, infection so that we can uh, take some of the activities you know online and it has actually helped us because uh, uh, it has reduced the face-to-face -face interaction and also it has improved safety for those of you who are not Nigerians uh, you would have heard maybe on the news media how our country is bedeviled by a lot of uh, kidnappings and uh, the activities of uh, uh, bandits and uh, insurgents so uh, it's safer for us to stay in the comfort of our homes, you know, to carry out uh, non clinical work uh, virtually. And then the ISO of Nigeria to uh, organize this bi monthly uh, knowledge object uh, webinar series. And uh, the participation has been great for our members in the addiction unit. Uh, the facilitators are usually the national trainers and emphasis is placed on local content and usually uh, go for two hour uh, series. And it has been very helpful because it helps us, you know, to actually update our knowledge and to also uh, connect with colleagues in other parts of the country and to encourage one another in this very difficult uh, situation we find ourselves, particularly for those of us who are in resource constraint in our, our countries. But what has been our benefits of virtual learning? First of all, uh, we have had the opportunity, I think, uh, 
for the first time really to be able to learn from experts uh, all over the world in the field of addiction and we do that free of charge. That has actually encouraged, motivated, and stimulated us to attend the webinars to make up for whatever perceived deficiencies we think might be there in our programs. And uh, we also, as I said, we learn from the comfort of our homes. Uh, nobody wants to actually move out unnecessarily except just uh, need to go out. So after our clinical work and some of the practical that we do, we go on virtually with our lectures, meetings, and some other things. And I can say that uh, virtual learning actually has come to stay because most uh, members of staff find it very, very interesting, particularly the younger ones, they enjoy uh, the online learning. And then we have uh, access to quality and current resource material, courtesy of uh, uh, ICDDR, ISOP, and uh, other organizations. As I said, this is free of charge, except for the data we have, you know, uh, to buy, to be able to connect and gain this knowledge, you know, uh, free of charge, which has actually enriched our program and has brought us, you know, up to date to, you know, with whatever is happening uh, globally. And uh, we are also trying, you know, opportunities for networking with other uh, institutions, other countries, and individuals, even locally. And uh, as I said, it is far cheaper for us because uh, it's to we have to pay to get the materials, but you may not even get the benefit of uh, listening to people and experts all over the world and you know participating uh, directly in the seminars or webinars and asking questions. But now with uh, the webinars from ISA, uh, ICDDR, and the uh, UNODC uh, programs, we are really happy and uh, very much delighted to be part of the global community, you know, sharing knowledge, uh, sharing ideas, and collaborating actually very, very uh, cheaply. That's really helped us and is a welcome idea for us. What are the challenges that we face? Uh, our challenges are as follows. We most times have a problem with our network our connections here. Um, sometimes it's actually difficult to connect for an hour without having interruption. So what we do to uh, mitigate this problem is to have, for instance, two or three networks connected so that if one fails, uh, the others can come on so that we don't uh, miss out. That has been a major challenge, particularly uh, when we have uh, our raining uh, season here, our rains here are usually very torrential rains and they can just disrupt you know, the network and the connections at that moment. Uh, they will have, uh, sometimes you have poor partic participant concentration. They are easily distracted because sometimes, as I said, these seminars are done at home at 7 p.m. when we have closed for work uh, from work. So, they can be easily uh, distracted. So you have to keep calling names and ensure that whoever is connected, you know, is also participating because sometimes the connection can be there, the videos are not on, and you are not sure if uh, they are with you, except you call names when you ask questions and get responses from them. So we do that from time to time to ensure that uh, the participation in the online uh, program uh, is good. Uh, affordability of data can be difficult for some in this part of the world because the income is not as good as you have it in, in uh, other parts of the world. So for those of us who are psychiatrists, uh, all of us are working, so we are paid and the pay uh, on the average uh, is better because uh, of the ministry which we work. And, uh, Affordability of data is not a problem, but for some others who might not be medical doctors by profession, the pay might not be as good as for those of us who are psychiatrists. So 
they may not have the luxury of you know having two or three uh, networks you know connected at the same time to be able to uh, keep pace with uh, the program and the absence of our local content in the UTC curriculum is what we are working on and when we have our webinars particularly the ice of Nigeria we try to see how we can you know incorporate our, our local content into uh, the curriculum from our local research work uh, it's not very convenient for us to carry out group uh, practical search, uh, exercises so the practical we do most of it face to face but for the uh, lectures or seminars whatever we do most of it uh, you know virtually well minimal group interaction is one of the challenges that we face uh, for us here we are people who are very sociable uh, people who are very humorous you know we want to make the place lively and have fun which we were not able to have you know online that notwithstanding we do our best to make the virtual learning uh, interesting and as absence of face-to-face -face, uh, interactions jokes and others you know makes it a little bit uh, uh, less interesting compared to uh, the face-to-face -face one that we have, have been used to all along and sometimes you want to add videos and uh, because of the bandwidth or because of the poor network we're not able to add videos uh, to our presentations as we would have loved to and uh, as I said uh, participants can be easily distracted because of the environment which you know they are connected from so what is the future of our program we have tried to develop a master's program which is being reviewed uh, by the faculty uh, in addiction science because we want a, a new department of addiction science whereby we can have uh, professionals uh, from the medical fields uh, psychologists the social workers nurses and all those who are interested uh, in this field of addiction you know and come and study the psychiatrists have the privilege of uh, undergoing this training in their uh, residency training or their postgraduate programs but the others do not have the privilege you know of developing themselves in this uh, addition uh, profession like the psychiatrist so we believe that if we are able to set up a, a master's program or a postgraduate diploma in addition science we'll be able to adapt all the UTC UPC and uh, the UNC treatment into the program so that those who are not uh, uh, additional specialists can also benefit from the training and that's what we are doing now but in the interim we have tried to uh, as I said a uh, career echo training for all those who work in the addition field in the unit we are also trying to evaluate feedback from the classes and the training we've had so far and to stimulate more research to generate you know our local uh, data uh, for those of us who are psychiatrists will be able to adapt the UTC the UPC and uh, the uh, university treatment program into our postgraduate uh, specialization in uh, addition already but as I said we are doing that for those who are not as psychiatrists and we also uh, have a policy to be able to try for placement of future graduates in addition you know into the civil service because it's one thing to be able to uh, undergo or undergo a study in a particular class it's a, a different thing altogether to be able to fit into the civil service and to have a proper placement so we are working on that too and they also uh, we are working uh, to seek inter-country collaboration and exchange programs to be able to enrich our knowledge and also strengthen uh, our experience here. And we are encouraging uh, more participants, faculty staff, and uh, lecturers to sit for the ICAP examinations. Some who are already uh, professional uh, uh, professionals in the addition field don't see the need to sit for any exams, but we see encourage that people can sit for it that notwithstanding uh, there's nothing wrong in, in taking the exams 
because for some, a particular psychiatry, they think that uh, the course is basic, but it help us in this part of the world to actually standardize uh, our practice in this field of uh, addiction. So in conclusion, I want to say that in the light of uh, the current realities, uh, particularly the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent lockdown that follow, we believe that uh, virtual learning uh, is significant for our educational development in this uh, field of uh, addiction. And as I said earlier on, virtual learning has come to stay. Uh, it's going to help us in carrying out our uh, addiction prevention programs, treatment and public health interventions uh, in, the, in this field. And particularly uh, for the fact that we have an you know, open doors and opportunities to access current uh, material, literature, and also to learn from the experts all over the world. Just come to stay and it's going to be part of our uh, programs, even uh, in the foreseeable future. So I thank you all for listening to this uh, presentation. Thank you, Moses, for that presentation. Next, I'd like to welcome Zal Kepley and Aisha Sadika. Zal is a global master trainer at GDDR and ICAP-1, and Aisha is a global master trainer at GDDR and UPC. They will be discussing the Malaysian experience working with ICUDDR in developing an academic addiction science program. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My colleagues and me will uh, present this patient experience working with ICCTR developing an academic education science program. Okay, a little bit of introductions of our, um, our, our organization. The Supreme Training Consultant Malaysia, STCM, is a registered organization early 2021, very recently. Uh, we are officially signed. Uh, MOA with Colombo Plan, PAP, as training provider on March 11, 2021, with the village of using UPP and UPC. For that, we truly grateful to Kim, uh, ISAP, and Colombo Plan. Uh, our objective simply uh, hold, we hold, uphold all objectives in alignment with the parents' uh, organization. The Colombo plan, uh, ICCDR and ISTAP, is many things, UTC, UPC, PACE, Edison, and training studies worldwide. As our organization will uh, dealing with the Institute of Higher Learning, we are, of course, uh, closer to ICCDR. Honestly, we are very happy working with ICCDR. Both Kimberly and Kerry are great. They seem to understand our, our problems and always there when we need them. Thanks, Guy. Our first DDR program was Postgraduate Diploma in Addiction Science, PGDS, a collaborative program between Colmo Plan, DAP, and Cyber Giant College of Medical Sciences, currently renamed as University of Cyber Giant Malaysia. Uh, unfortunately, the program was terminated at the end of uh, 2019 after successfully we, we had produced three batches of graduates. Uh, the, uh, from 2016 to 2019. Yeah? Uh, we are very grateful again to uh, Kimberly for her prompt reaction to, to uh, recommend us to both Colombo Plan and the uh, uh, Colombo Plan and I huh? to be designated as training provider immediately after she learned of our termination of our program. That rekindles our spirit because it gives us another chance to further contribute toward the goals of drugs demand reduction. Okay, I whenever I talk about um, about uh, relationship of between uh, 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 between uh, ICCDR and our, our organization, we always. We always uh, 
related to a small boat relationship, big boat and big kids and small boat relationship. Okay, we are as the uh, as this uh, uh, train provider, we consider ourselves a small boat with a small capability, but very proud enough to be part of our parent organization in dealing with huge and no and human problems of drug demand reduction worldwide. Certainly, the big ships and the small boats need each other to accomplish their get goal. The SDM's main goals, as we're dealing with uh, UST again, our main goal is to work closely with ICCUDR, providing consultations in developing current uh, curriculums to UCs and sequencing of academic coursework related to undergraduate study program, master programs, as well as PhD. We are also working with Colmo Pen, the AP, providing trainings in person and virtual courses of thought courses uh, to addiction professional as well as general public. We also uh, promote research in the addiction prevention and treatment among students of different level of studies at the UC. That education, uh, we engage student and addiction professional in education in academic and continuing education programs in education studies and promote career opportunities in prevention and treatment. Uh, support by parent organizations, assistance such as uh, technical support and continuous training in various aspects of training to training providers are significantly helping them to become more uh, effective. For example, we have courses like Global Drug Human Reduction Trainers 1 and 2, uh, GDDR Learning Community 1 and 2. Okay. Then we have trains, the trainers web, uh, webinars, publishing addiction science, prevention intervention, UPC managers, and profile series. All this really helps us a lot. Okay, uh, now we are, we, I'll touch on how. Our recent problem, our recent work with the UC. Okay. <clears throat> when we talk to, uh, I talked to Terry about doing this cut, the new program in the UC, uh, he suggests we do need assessment. Okay, but uh, the three stages. The first stage is conducting the need assessment okay, to identify the need for the program and where students would come from. And then the second stage, provide the training as walk, a walkthrough, eh? whichever curriculum is the correct one. Select trainers eh? for training with uh, ICCVR technical and uh, admin, admin support. Then the third stage, provide consultation. But in our case, we start off with a uh, uh, proposed drug the drug demand reduction program to the UC. The UC we, we the first UC we contacted was UC uh, Sultan Azalan Shah State UC. Yeah? At this point of time, we the needs of, of our programs, where the students come from, we have identified by having direct uh, negotiation, direct contact, direct discussion with few UC, and they seem to uh, ever willing to take up the program. Okay. <coughs> Then from there, okay, we have several meetings, okay, meeting after meeting. Then, uh, first of all, we, we had a meeting with uh, the deans of psychology uh, department, then the director of uh, professional uh, development, also uh, open uh, distance learning director. Then after that, we had our proposal was then tabled at the is the uh, Director of uh, uh, Dean head head of head of department uh, used this uh, meeting, and the proposal went through, got through, and we are waiting uh, for the meeting of the next meeting to table that proposal. Hopefully by end of this month. And after that, we we, we passed that one. We, that proposal has to go to Malaysian Quality Agency, Ministry of Higher Education, this year. So a long way, long process. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. If uh, uh, let's see what the factors sustaining and adapting election science to virtual training STC reality. Now, when we propose our uh, our, uh, our program to the UST, that was already March 2021, and we have problems, of course, with with a uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic beginning with uh, on the 30th year, January 2020. So uh, again, as we table the proposals, then by now we still a proposal that will go through to the next meeting. We have. Uh, still have a problem of COVID-19 and most of the universities are still closed and they having online uh, uh, virtual training. Eh? Okay, based, based on that chart, you can see uh, it shows until now at this point of time, COVID-19 is still with us. This means that having in-person classes for students, children and higher learning institutions is risky. So we have no choice. So uh, our next meeting will be on this uh, virtual uh, training our program because there's no way to have uh, in-person uh, in uh, uh, training or academic classes. Okay, Malaysia high learning institution reaction toward close uh, to this chaos caused by COVID-19 is very clear. For example, UITM or UC Technology Mara has moved all classes to open and distance learning ODL modes effective April 13 until the end of the semester for all its campus nationwide. So the, 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 the programs begin to be uh, as the, uh, the UC has moved here program to ODL. Okay. A small sample survey we, we do to see reactions of the students, lecturers, and parents, we can get, first of all, of course, we can see the disadvantage, most of them talking about disadvantage. Uh, student of poor network connection, they just go to study and so all those kind of things, uh, always a problem. Okay, but then we have ways, uh, they're talking about ways and means to solve the problem. For poor student, internet connection, for poor internet uh, internet connection, material are sent to email. For those who are good internet connection, teaching and learning will be conducted through low data applications such as uh, WhatsApp and Telegram. Yeah? Then synchronous season, uh, synchronous sessions are held in moderation considering adult uh, student limitation, especially those with poor internet speed. Yeah? They consider all this. Then they also conducted uh, according to student time timetable to avoid overlapping online classes. Eh? Student with good internet connection, they can join the shadow session. Student can also participate in that phase also, uh, asynchronized learning activities on you see on uh, online learning platform. Eh? Okay, lecturer will come out with videos. PowerPoint slide and recorded instruction. So finally, they believe, for as conclusion, they believe that UCF factors has done the best, the real best, uh, giving students the best online learning experience. So uh, as a conclusion, virtual learning training or learning uh, or online home-based learning are here today in this year. Learning institution, teachers, educators, parents, and students must keep pace, will keep pace with technological changes. We like it not, we have to do that and embrace teaching and learning innovation. Educators and trainers and teachers should equip themselves with information and communication technology still to facilitate online teaching and learning. So we have no other ways. If this COVID is still with us, we have to go on doing this. Uh, virtual learning or online home based Okay, I, I I hand over to Aisha to continue the her experience in the virtual training. Aisha. Okay. 
thank you very much uh, sir especially thank you very much icu ddr colombo plan and other stakeholders for giving us this opportunity uh, here i would like to share my experience because we are working virtually uh, since this pandemic is been started and uh, there was uh, a lot of trainings and a lot of webinars and some other interactive sessions so um, i will share my experience with my our colleagues and um, uh, the other ddr professionals next slide please uh, this is a little bit about me. Uh, I'm, I'm working in the field of drug demand reduction from almost last 14 years. I am honored to be among the pioneers of uh, uh, the people who worked in the DDR uh, in my country, uh, uh, who introduced the evidence-based practices in Pakistan, and we also introduced UPC trainings and UTC trainings. I'm also honored to be among the UPC trainers um, when we uh, when it was launched by the Club of Planning 2014. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, when we will talk about the pandemic uh, uh, situations, uh, the online learning experience, especially during the pandemic situation, it was very different because uh, everything, uh, once uh, this pandemic was started, everything was, uh, um, the people were very much confused what to do, how we will learn, especially the students, they were, because at that time I was also working, uh, I was also in Malaysia and they, we were uh, like in, in a fix that what is going to happen next, how we will start our classes, because classes were immediately closed so in this situation uh, actually there was always um, uh, some ways some sort of learnings in in your problematic situation so in this situation we uh, actually try to find the new ways how we can learn because the learning was the badly need of the hour at that time because uh, everybody there was looking for the ways to come out from this pandemic or to cope up with their uh, daily routines uh, especially in this pandemic situation and secondly mental health support was very much important because the uh, because of the quarantine the significance of addiction professionals and mental health professionals it was much more increased and after that there was also a need of professional learning and grooming with reference to the e or virtual uh, background and for that purpose there was a need of capacity building of university staff training staff uh, training professionals so that they can meet up the needs of these trainings and online programs uh, through their uh, proper and capacity building programs. So um, there was also the challenges of COVID-19 for the addiction professionals, like uh, there were so many trainings, they were cancelled, even ISAP was cancelled, and they, they, uh, we, we were actually working with the prison that time, the, uh, we supposed to train the prison staff, but that, that all plans were cancelled because of this pandemic situation so we rethink and we try to adjust it again uh, with a context of e and virtual learning next slide please all right uh, when i think uh, when uh, if you uh, when i talk about uh, this my virtual experience i will i would like to share something especially with my friends that I find the three steps that are much more significant when you are going for the virtual trainings. Number one, the concentration. Your concentration, uh, this online trainings needs much more concentrations as compared to the other trainings because um, you are very much into the things. Uh, you're supposed to arrange uh, the participants. You're supposed to arrange the agenda because you are presenting the agenda differently, especially when you are going for the UTC trainings or UPC trainings. Uh, you need to convert the full day agenda uh, into to, uh, into the many days, like two hours uh, per day. Or maybe some people, they go for the three hours. So for this purpose, your concentration is much more important because um, you also need to consider the uh, literacy, virtual literacy of the participants, their digital skills, and they also uh, their connections also matters. So in the second step, the coordination is very important because in the other trainings, you just go for the, uh, you send them the invitation and the people, they come, they, uh, I mean, they stay at a place and they get the training for six days, seven days, five days. But in this uh, online training, uh, because the, you are not with the participants, it is just a virtual relation. So this one is much more important because the, if you are not coordinating very well, then your training and especially the attendance of your I mean, training it may be affected and then task handling this virtual trainings are actually multiple task handling because in the one time you are also chatting with uh, you are 
replying the questions, uh, answers of the questions. You are also presenting. You are also giving the assignment. So there are uh, much more to do. So these three steps are uh, that were very much significant uh, with reference to my experience as virtual training. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, as DDR, DDR trainer, I found uh, something very differently, especially when we started uh, these trainings, we planned that we are going to be virtual now and there will be no in-person training. So we were trying to find out the ways for uh, new ways for learning and training. Obviously, we um, uh, approached the Zoom and the other uh, other uh, media tools, uh, media tools uh, to conduct these trainings. And then uh, we also want all the participants easy to access the course. And especially, this is very easy for them. Uh, for example, uh, we recently conducted a training on UPC core course in Malaysia, and the, the um, most of the Malaysian universities. From the most of Malaysian universities, the teachers and students, they also participated. Like some were sitting in the other province and some were sitting in the on the other side of Malaysia. But everyone was, it was easy for everyone to join the training. So this is, I think, a um, blessing for the professionals, especially in this disguise, that they can join the trainings from the different corners of their country or maybe their city. And then uh, host the virtual uh, roundtable discussions, uh, especially uh, because when I started the training, it was uh, a bit difficult for me to engage everyone. But later on, it was very useful that we started discussions and uh, like we, we choose one by one and we also use adult learning theories, especially I will mention here that the poll questions were very interesting and it gave me very good result. And it's group discussions, breakout sessions, brainstorming sessions, and reading assignments for the as a home task, it was also very effective. And then the role playing, uh, it is also very effective technique. And online, the people, uh, when we gave them the role, they perform it very well. But also there were some cha challenges like um, planning the activities. Sometimes we plan the activity in different way, but unfortunately the participant, they are not able to understand or they are not able to participate as per the given agenda. So there are some sort of challenges. And uh, second is the unifying the participants. Uh, some of them have connection problems. Some of them, they have some urgent issues. And uh, some of them, they have, they said, we, we are unable to connect maybe we are unable to download the app they have some problems in their um, laptop or in their mobile etc so this type of challenges are also um, you can say the part of the virtual trainings and then internet tools uh, user friendly it must be the user friendly like now zoom is now um, i think it's very easy to use for everyone and then connection issues, uh, some irrelevant stimulants and limited interaction and uh, limited group activities. Because um, when you are uh, in in-person training, uh, maybe you can do much more activities with the groups because you have much more time. But in, uh, if you are planning the session for two hours or three hours, you do not have much time to do the group activities in detail. Uh, next slide, please. So same as a DDR professional, I also experienced something differently. Like uh, uh, I exist, uh, I found that now uh, I don't need to travel. I don't need to spare some time. I don't need to apply for the leave from my organization so I can uh, access to the trainings as a trainer and as a participant uh, everywhere in the world. Secondly, it enhanced the communication skills because not only communication skills, but also our digital skills. And it is also time efficient and, and it is also the combination of structure structured and freedom. Structured mean uh, your all the trainings are structured and the freedom is you can join your um, your trainings with at your own place with your own choice like uh, uh, you're in your own room in your office etc. Next slide please. <clears throat> so uh, there were a few things that I observed during the training that I really wanted to share with my colleagues at that sometimes when you are sitting in a room on a chair and you are attending the trainings one by one webinars seminars conferences so um sometimes we are not uh, much uh, concerned about our health so uh, maybe uh, some of other colleagues will be shared this one but i thought this is very much important and this is my experience in virtual learning some of uh, even me and some of my friends they said that they put on the weight and they have some health concerns so be being a uh, being a trainer or being a professional being a teacher a lecturer when you are working online you must take care of yourself 
uh, especially you need to stay uh, connected socially with other people and get enough proper sleep because i observe that when we are working online it is much more as compared to in person or in office so especially the 30 minutes exercise is much more important especially the people who are in like in malaysia there is a quarantine in pakistan there is quarantine uh, not much but malaysia in, in malaysia it is much more sp- uh, strict so you can just do exercise in your um, in your uh, inside your house and the if it is possible go for the walk eat well even you can take coffee you can take snacks or tea during your sessions also drink water manage your time wisely like if you are uh, you have 22 hours and 30 minutes session don't go for the 3 hours or 3 30 hours because it will not only have effect for your participants but it will also hectic for you as well and also get help if you need it like in technical issues in relaxation and or must take break even if you have 2 hour sessions must go for the break at least for 5 minutes because this this break is uh, very much effective okay next slide Uh, in the end i will just uh, share with you some lessons which i learned and uh, especially in our online trainings and number one uh, make sure you you have a stable connection the connectivity is the biggest issue not only from the uh, trainers but also from the participants and secondly uh, must implement the virtual ice breakers engage the participants uh, like um, you, you may ask them to turn on your cameras and they, you can communicate you can randomly call them and ask them to to say something about the topic like this uh, in this way the participants will be much more engaged and then set your clear go- uh, and uh, goals and ground rules uh, especially when i go for the online trainings my first and foremost ground rule is the punctuality because i tell them this is not a full day training this is just two hours or three hours training or learning so uh, please spare some time like you must learn that um, you have uh, you are going to learn you are going to dedicate these 2 3 hours for your specific learning so be on time and be punctual and uh, be regular and utilize the chat window it is very effective by the way when you uh, put the chats in the window and especially encourage the participants for question and answers and they must like i already mentioned must schedule the breaks in your agendas and they also encourage the participants for use the camera because i i observe that mo- uh, most of the time the participants they do not use camera and most of the time they are doing some other activities some uh, sort of uh, house chores maybe checking the emails talking to someone or eating something it is okay no problem but um, if uh, i think there must be uh, an engagement from them because uh, when you are teaching online you have just one source that is the virtual you if you are uh, watching your participants in the window this is the only connection with them so uh, encourage uh, them to use uh, the camera turn on the camera and they also participate in the chat and also uh, schedule the appropriate, appropriate sessions uh, which are suitable for your participants okay next slide uh, uh, thank you very much this is all from me and uh, i wish you good luck thank you Thank you Zal and Aisha. Um next I would yeah. like Okay. <laughs> uh next I'd like to welcome uh Kimberly Johnson. Kim is the executive director of ICU DDR as well as an associate professor at the University of South Florida Department of Mental Health Law and Policy. Um previously Dr. Johnson has served as a in one moment sorry my bio collapsed no nope, that's not it okay um <laughs> she do everything just <laughs> just move on <laughs> at the last second the entire bio just collapsed on me in the spreadsheet um sorry about that but anyways dr johnson will be presenting on um variation in themes in addiction education and training programs Jeff. Um so let's let's go to the next slide. I I am ap- apologizing for um Mikhailovsky. He was um supposed to be here and um 
he had a, um, actually a funeral that came up that he had to attend. And so he is not able to be here. Um, I, so we, uh, what I would like to do is actually, our plan was to talk a little bit about where we've been and where we want to go. But um, what I would, but I want to get some feedback and a little bit of discussion. And, and so what I'd like to do is maybe if we could skip through to, I think it's the last or the second to the last slide, where is the discussion portion? So um, if you wouldn't mind doing that for me, we, you know, we've, we've been around at least conceptually since 2016. Um, there we go. Let's leave it. Let's go back to, um, and one more back. There we go. Um, so we've been around since about 2016, almost five years, at least conceptually. And, uh, you know, we've accomplished quite a bit. And, um, and, and you know, you can hear uh, many stories like the ones that we've heard today from, um, from Malaysia and from um, Nigeria. And there's been a lot of movement in the world around um, creating new education programs for um, training the workforce. And so, what we so we're really thinking about how we go forward. What do we do um, next? We focused a lot on building the network. We focused a lot on um, providing training and consultation for programs that are um, being created. In the last year, we really focused on how do we all transition to um, doing what we do, but in a virtual environment. And that's of course the, the theme of this conference. Um, and also the, the theme of the, the presentations that you've heard um, just now. And so, you know, a couple of the things that we're thinking about going forward and that we, we really want to have a conversation with our membership over the next six months or so to say, what do you, what do you want from us? What, you know, why are you engaged with us and what can we do um, to be more supportive of you? And some of the things that we've thought about are, um, are so we've been, working on quality standards for education programs that train um, primarily addiction counselors that work in that arena of um, treatment. Um, and that's a thing in process now. Um, something that we're interested in hearing more from you all about um, is, um, is sustainability of education programs. I think Sal's experience was a really um, important one for us to learn from and what can we do um, differently to support um, not just creation of new programs, but also ensuring that they're sustainable. Um, you know, what, what can we do to make the website better? I think we really want to hear from you on that. We, we've talked a lot about collaborative research, um, and we have the learning collaborative on publications that's been ongoing, um, and we have the course that's in development by Kenyatta University that will eventually be available to, to everybody to adopt. Um, on uh, teaching students how to improve their uh, publication rate. Um, and so, but we're sort of interested in hearing more about other kinds of um, ways we can collaborate around research. Um, and the last thing that we've talked about is, is, is setting up some sort of uh, student and teacher exchange. Um, so not maybe as elaborate as a, as a fellowship, like the Humphrey Fellowship that some of you have participated in, but something where, particularly now that we're so much working in the virtual environment, how can we work together? Are there things that are there ways that we can organize where maybe I would teach a course in another country, or you would teach a course for me, um, or something like that? So we have only a few minutes left, but I'm hoping that um, um, I mean, it doesn't really look like we have any questions. So you can take a little extra time if you want. Well, maybe what we could do is to open it up. If to because it's a small group, right? It's not a very big group to open it up just for discussion. And if people have reactions or thoughts um, to my, if there are no, I mean, also if you have questions for the other uh, presenters, certainly um, pose those. But I'm just curious if you could, can we open up or does it have to be in the um, the chat? Um, oh, actually, I am seeing. A question. It just wasn't using the Q and A thing, but I. It doesn't look like a full question. Read it, and I'll see if I can. I just see how to promote competency and skills development training on, but that's all I see. 
addressing how to promote competency and skills training. Yeah, I think that that's something. So I think I think I get where you're going with that, and that's something I have raised too. Is um, and Aisha kind of uh, alluded to this, I think, in her presentation too, and, and maybe you can speak to this as well. Is um, is you know adapting our our teaching and our methods so that we can teach skills in this kind of environment. It is a very different process. And so if you're interested in our focusing more on that, that's what the, the question or the comment was. I, I agree with you. I think we should do more of that. Um, Aisha, you, I, I don't know if you want to try to address that because you did allude to it in your in like your last couple slides about how you really had to, it's a different process trying to engage people and, um, and do practice kinds of stuff in, in this environment. Yes. Uh, can you repeat the question, please? I think just once. Yeah, it was, it was really about how, how we, how I think, how ICDDR can help the universities develop their capacity to teach um, skills, it's, mm -hmm. um, skills based kinds of activities in, in the virtual environment. That's how I'm interpreting that partial question. Oh, it, it, they actually just came through with the word online, so on the right track. <laughs> okay, uh, may I respond? Okay, uh, so uh, I think uh, when we started these programs, we set up a, a session prior to the training and we trained, uh, we invited all the participants and we trained them, we uh, literated them about the use of Zoom and also we developed, uh, give them, uh, I mean, introduce some skills like how they can participate, how can they can engage themselves in the online trainings. Secondly, if you talk about the university uh, life, uh, uh, university training things, we already have a lot of life skill programs uh, Colombo plan is also developed the UPC program especially for the universities you can go for that and you can develop I mean um, some of the sense among your teachers and among the participants like we are working with the university uh, and we are going to introduce the, uh, this um, uh, one year program and also the master's program so before that we are also training the university staff especially how to do this how to um, involve uh, the students in the program, how to involve the parents, especially related to the parenting skills and teaching skills, also the community participation. So you can also go for the life skills programs of UNODC, you can also go for the Colombo Plans UPC programs. So all these uh, curriculums are very much effective to train your staff first, your university staff, and then you can go for the addiction sciences program. Because once your staff is much more, much more aware and they are trained for the specific uh, programs that you are going to introduce, then they can go for the teaching and maybe this will be the better professional education. The one more point that I would like to mention here, uh, this is not uh, like the, a formal education like the, the other students are doing. This is much more professional education. Like I worked for the 14 years with the government and with international bodies and then I go for the postgraduate diploma. Why? Because uh, my experience, my I have psychology degree, but I don't have degree in addiction sciences so this uh, program is much more professional so i believe that uh, you should train your university staff first and they um, also train your professionals on the specific topic and then you can go for the degree program i hope i addressed the question because i'm unable to see the question <laughs> okay so i think i think you did get it and i think um so we're at the end of our time, I think. And, and um, as Aisha said in her presentation, we need to take care of our health. And we have another session starting in a half hour. So we want to have to do a moment, some break between those sessions. Um, so I'm going to end it by just saying there we, are, we will be reaching out um, over the course of the next six months, trying to get feedback from everybody about what your priorities are and how we can help you uh, reach those priorities. And... Um, and so, you know, look for it and be, and let us know because we can only serve our membership if you tell us what we need to do. So, Jessica, I'm going to turn it back to you to close us up. 
All right, thank you. And I would just like to thank all of our attendees and presenters for an amazing session. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of the conference. So thank you, everyone.